Super simple guitar and I'm very happy to be back. So um, today, in today's lesson, I'm just going to be teaching you a little part of what I did there because this was a kind of improvised thing, a blues thing. And the part that I'm going to be teaching you is this. <laughs> vamp thing that you can do anytime you're playing a blues in E. You could, you could use that and, and build that in there, okay? So that's what I'm gonna be teaching you in today's lesson. Just a quick little, um, you know, talking thing here. I'm back after my summer break. I take long breaks in the summertime from making videos just to recharge and to collect new inspiration. So I'm back, I'm very happy to be back. We got this new guitar here now that I'm back, which is a heritage guitar. I'll be talking about this in um, another video. Um, I also got the new backdrop. I asked you guys on Facebook, what do you think about the backdrop? And I got a lot of answers and the, the, the smallest amount of people wanted this backdrop, but um, the original video didn't look that, or the original picture didn't look that great. And now I think with the lighting, um, this could look really cool. So let me know what you think about the backdrop. Behind it is the, the one that people voted the most, which was B, which is the white one. So let me know what you think. I think the guitar looks really nice um, with this backdrop. Now the way that I have the lighting set up. I also have some new stuff going on here with my gear so that I have a very nice sound for you guys. Um, hopefully you will enjoy the, the sound. Hopefully the guitar isn't too loud, which it actually might be, I'm realizing now. So anyways, without further ado, let's get in the close up. One last thing, if you haven't yet, you guys know I have this book that I made. Um, there's a free PDF version if you want to download it, 42 pages of how to master the fretboard. And if you want to become an All Access member, I actually ship these straight to my members' houses um, as a welcome gift when they join the All Access membership. And um, the tab for this is also going to be included in the lesson of the week part of the membership. So for my members, I got a tab for you guys. Um, for everybody else, I'm going to teach it nice and slow so you'll be able to learn even if you don't want to become a member. And that's about that. All right, I will see you in the close-up. Thank you for hanging out with me. See you there. All right, so welcome to the intro. So let me first show you what I said I was going to teach you in the intro. And then I'm also going to show you how you could continue to play this as a 12-bar blues and a couple other things that I did in the intro as well. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit more in-depth than I originally said I was in the intro, okay? So the first thing sounds like this. All right, and that's a cool little sounding thing that I really like to do, especially with this um, kind of Jimi Hendrix chord is what it's called, a raised nine chord, a E raised nine chord. So basically we're gonna start it off like this. I'm gonna go over here to the second fret and I'm going to play the fourth string, second fret, and I'm going to do a pull off. Same thing on the fifth string. Same thing on the sixth string, but now on the third fret. Okay, so that's. And then we're going to end it by barring down on the fourth and fifth string and playing the fifth and sixth string. And if you want, you could get that fourth string in there too, since we're already holding it down, right? So that's that's up to you. So all together. Oops. So that's the kind of groove that we're going for. And then comes in that really cool chord. So this is one of my favorite chords to play um, lately. So it goes like this. My middle finger is on the 7th fret, 5th string. My first finger is on the 6th fret, 4th string. 
and my ring finger is on the third string, seventh fret. Okay, and then the pinky is down here on the um, eighth fret, second string. So really slowly there. You can hear the tension there with that um, flat nine, or raised nine, I should say. Okay, so. Uh, that's the Jimi Hendrix chord right there. So what we're going to be doing, and this is going to be the tricky part for you, is to go from here and get to this chord fast enough. All right, that's going to be the tricky part. Um, you know, but that's that's that. So. Ba -da -ba -da -boom -ba. If you see what I'm doing here, I'm doing these these kind of dead notes in between. So I'm going. So that's dead. And I'm only putting down pressure when I'm actually hitting the chord. In the meantime, my fingers are touching the strings, but they're not pushing down. And the cool thing also with this chord is you can play the open sixth string. Okay, so see how I'm adding pressure, and then releasing, adding and releasing, and that's making it sound more staccato sounding rather than there's a difference between and right. So I'm quieting the strings in between always. Okay, so all together. So that's kind of part one cool thing that you could do. And if you were playing a blues, I'd play that four times. So I'd go. Keep missing the strings. It's because it's a different guitar. If I was on my strat, I'd be hitting all the strings. But when you learn how to play on one guitar and switch over, then there's always this readjusting that's necessary. So uh, forgive me for missing the strings the whole time. So that's kind of point one. And then of course, if you were to play a blues instead of just a vamp, vamp meaning that you're just repeating this whole thing this, the whole time. That would be like a one chord vamp, right? But if you wanted to actually turn it into a blues progression, then the next chord in the blues, since we're starting off with the E, and that's our one, is A, right? And that's what I did in the intro. So you could do that four times, and then you could go. Fourth time, you could go bam, 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 boom, and then instead of going here, you'd go down to the A. Right? That would be something you could do. Another thing that you could do um, would be instead of playing this, if you know your pentatonic, if you know your pentatonic, any of the notes within here will work. So instead of going Starting on the fourth string, you could start on the third string. And you could do different combinations. You could go. So you could, you have the freedom, if you know where the notes are, to come up with your own um, combinations and own possibilities. Or you could, you could stick to these notes that we already did, but just change it around and go. So again, I'm experimenting here. I'm trying to find something that looks good, okay? And the point of this is to give you ideas so that you um, can start playing creatively rather than just learning um, a bunch of stuff from lessons, right? I wanna teach you to come up with your own musical ideas. Okay, so. That's another thing you could do. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but there's just so much. When I start talking about the blues, it just opens up this whole, you know, free thinking way of playing. So after you do that, four times. The, the fifth 
sixth time around, and the sixth time around, is I went ba na ba na boom. So I went ba na ba na boom, and then I hit the open A. And then I barred down here, giving me an A chord, right? But I'm just barring down on the second, third, and fourth string. And then the second time around, I added in this note, which is giving me a seventh, A7, right? So. Something again that's optional that you could do since it's the blues, right? Another thing you could do is um, so after this, instead of playing this A here two times, you could play it once here, and then the second time. Down here, this is another way of playing A7. I know I'm giving you way too much information here, but try to bear with me. So this is, if you look at a D7, right, it's the exact same thing, except now we're pushing it over here to the ninth fret. Okay, so it's the same shape. And that's an A, giving me an A7. So See how cool that sounds? So that's the ninth fret. And then this guy's on the eighth fret, right? Then you just go back to the E. For the B. So now I just went and then I went into a B7. Then you can go down to A. E. Then end it on that B. So that's the blue structure. So hopefully, if you know the blue structure, then you'll kind of be able to fit all these pieces into place. I have an entire course on that, since I gave you way too much information in this lesson. So if you wanna, if you don't know the blues and the blue structure and how the blues works, the one, four, five, I have a whole course on that where I go much slower. But um, in this lesson, I kind of gave you the information in a way assuming that you understand how a blues works, okay? So, I know I gave you a lot of information. If you want to just stick to the basic thing here. And if you want to go further, then experiment with these other possibilities, okay? All right, I hope that this wasn't too much all over the place. Bear with me, it's my first lesson after um, being away from making lessons, so be patient with me. Um, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this will give you some ideas. And I will see you very soon with another lesson. All right. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Bye-bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know what you think. Hopefully it wasn't too much um, info. If you want to go deeper and learn more about what I was doing um, on those other chords, I have an entire blues course within the All Access membership as well where I teach all of these things, you know. I just didn't want to make such a huge long lesson, just a quick lesson to get started off today. Anyways, I will see you very soon and um, take it easy. Have a great day. Henry Olson here. Bye-bye.